Okay, there we go. Uh, Prunandar Chryso, good afternoon. Welcome to the Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council Special Council Meeting on today, Wednesday, the 12th of October, 2021. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast by the authorities internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. Uh, any apologies for absence? So, Mr Mayor, we have recorded, I think, that Councillor Ernie Goldsworthy uh, is offering apologies and Councillor Tanya Skinner is offering apologies. And I think that we did also say that Councillor Jago was offering apologies unless she speaks now and tells me that she's here. No, she's here. She's here, Karis. She is there. I'm, oh, I'm here. Thank you. I just can't log on to my um, Mercer account, so I'm using an alternative. Thank you, Councillor Jago. Okay, thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? No, no one is indicating. So we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, Platinum Jubilee Merthyr Tidville City Status Application. And Councillor Garant Thomas, I believe, is presenting the report. Yes, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, before I go into the report, uh, would you indulge me a couple of minutes um, to read a letter that we've received from Lord Ted Rowland CB today, um, please. Thank you. Yes, please go ahead. It was my privilege to have served as the Member of Parliament for Merthyr Tidville for nigh on 30 years, from 1972 to 2001, which is three thirds of my life, really. <laughs> um, I was deeply struck and influenced by the intense sense of belonging within the communities which constituted the borough. Their sense was derived from the extraordinary industrial heritage and civic experience. I have also enjoyed the opportunity to research and write about this heritage and experience. My writing and my own service has informed this submission. Merthyr Tidville's extraordinary industrial experience is well known, but such fam familiarity should not in any way diminish the immensity of that experience. The contribution not only to the Welsh and British Industrial Revolution, but its international dimension. The term global economy is now much branded about, yet the early mid 19th century, Merthyr Tidville's e economy was truly global. Rail, rail struck in, in that once the rural hamlet of Dowlas created railway networks in three continents. Baltimore, New York, New Orleans and Nashville, Paris, Berlin, Leipzig and the ultimate largest rail order of the day, Moscow to St. Petersburg. And not forgetting the contribution to the new British rail network, London to Southampton, Liverpool to Manchester, London to Birmingham and key sections of the Great Western Railway. The current three South Wales cities, Newport, Cardiff, Swansea, would not have been what they are today had it not been for the wealth, resources and toil of the industrial interlands, and none more so than Merthyr Tidville, Merthyr Tidville's connection. Its vast production was first sent through the Glamorgan Canal, an engineering feat in itself, and the, the, the Taff Vale Railway, established by no fewer than six parliamentary bills carried through successive parliaments by Merthyr Tidville's first Member of Parliament, Josiah John Guest. The Taff Vale became the largest freight carrying railway of its day. Merthyr Tidville's contribution to the funding and founding of the boot docks was pivotal, and these docks were pivotal in the development of a capital city. Merthyr Tidville's civic history is a poignant and telling one. It's a story of prolonged struggle to achieve civic status, a status never offered, always reluctant and belatedly granted. It effectively began during the intense public and parliamentary debate upon parliamentary reform. The three reform bills of 1931, 1831 and 1832 proposed that Merthyr Tidville should become a contributory borough of a Cardiff borough constituency, despite the fact that its population was nearly three times larger. Only as a result of intense public and parliamentary pressure did the government of the day concede to the creation of a constitu constituency, the very last amendment to the third reform bill in 1842. Merthyr Tidville Cardiff 
was the first Welsh industrial constituency. Merthyr Tydfil has a lot of firsts. The story of the struggle to achieve local government status, municipal incorporation, is a woeful, lamentable story of prolonged obstruction, whereas a host of the new English industrial towns achieved <coughs> municipal incorporation after the 1834 Act. It took Merthyr some, 30, some 60 years to do so. In true style, it celebrated at last its civic status by building a town hall like no other. And unbelievably, after such a struggle, some 30 years later, it became a struggle of civic survival. Merthyr Tidville personified the disastrous depths of the Great Depression. Some 60% of its workforce idle. Large-scale emigration to England made it near impossible to sustain the service expected of a county borough. Commissioners sent by Whitehall concluded that a civic status was too onerous to bear. The local civic leaders desperately clung to their belief in Merthyr Tidwell and in, 90, and in 1936 found the most unlikely spokesman in Edward VIII. Something must be done, he said. Fast forward to another civic battle, 1993 to 94, and Conservative Secretary of State for Wales, David Hunt's proposal to create the Heads of the Valley's authority. The only supporters were Welsh office officials, and again, extraordinary Merthyr Tidville found the most unlikely ally, the much derided Secretary of State for Wales, John Redwood. I have to confess, I personally found him approachable and willing to listen. The case against was essentially that Merthyr Tidville would be too small to sustain county borough duties. In my exchanges, I gently drew attention that an, Eng that an English local government um, reorganisation exceptions had been made to recognise tr uh, tradition and heritage, e.g. Rutland. Why not accept there was an equivalent industrial heritage which also, which also should be recognised? He asked me to take Merthyr Tidville's case. On the 15th of March 1994, the Secretary of State announced he had, accepted, he had accepted it. I understand Merthyr Tidville's long proud history and his former status as a county borough. He countered the case of size by comparing Merthyr Tidville to Cardiganshire and Anglesey. There are six Welsh cities. Newport, Cardiff, Swansea, St. David's, Bangor and St. Asaph, all granted such status for their particular contribution, both culturally, historically. But all where's that such recognition of the extraordinary contribution, economically, socially, culturally, of the South Wales Valleys? The shaping and character of the Welsh nation, we have acknowledged civically our cathedrals and saints now surely we should simply recognise our entrepreneurs, our workers. There is a simple way to remedy this, gross omission, the city of Merthyr Tidville's. Ted Rollins. Thank you, Mr Mayor, um, for indulging me in that. I think he sent that letter to us all today, but perhaps um, a lot of us hadn't seen it or read it. So uh, I thought it's a, a real lovely letter and it surely um, strengthens our case. So. If I take it down to the report um, for Platinum Jubilee and Merthyr Tidville City Status Application, the summary is set out in 1.1 or 1.2, but if I can go to the introduction and background in 3.1. As the full council meeting on Wednesday, the 8th of September 2021, a presentation was shared with all elected members on a proposed bid to obtain city status for Merthyr Tidville. Members heard of becoming a city would improve cooperation between groups, positively contribute to the development of Merthyr Tidwell, and improve the confidence and expectations people and organisations have of Merthyr Tidwell. The improved positivity created by the application for city status will contribute to attracting inward investment, new businesses and skilled employees, boosting economic and social development in Merthyr Tidwell and surrounding areas. With the support of Dr. Jane Crode, urban economic and social researcher, the economic development team have explored key benefits to develop an application to the Platinum Jubilee Civic Honours Competition for Merthyr Tidville to be granted city status. If granted council approval to proceed, the bid will have the support of the Lord Lieutenant of Midland Morgan, Peter Vaughan, and High Sheriff of Midland Morgan, Jeff Edwards, 
were also Merthyr Tydfil residents, as well as Merthyr Tydfil and Rumney MP Gerald Jones, Swans East MP Karen Harris, and Newport West MP Ruth Jones. There are currently 69 cities in the UK, 51 in England, 7 in Scotland, 6 in Wales, and 5 in Northern Ireland. There is a proven positive economic impact of achieving city status. Preston, Newport, Stirling, Lisbon and Newry were made cities in 2002, and Chelmsford, Perth and St Asaph were made cities in 2012. All have outperformed their regional counterparts with increased investment and lower unemployment. At present, there are nine towns in England and Wales that are applying to the Platinum Jubilee Civic Honours competition for city status. Wrexham is the only, only town in Wales, but should approval be granted to apply, this will increase the two Welsh applications. It has been questioned whether Merthyr Tydfil is large enough to be a city. There are 12 cities in the UK with lower populations than Merthyr Tydfil. St Asaph, with a population of less than 3,355 people, and Perth with a population of 46,970, were granted city status in 2012. The Queen's Golden Jubilee. Therefore, Merthyr Tydfil, with a population of 59,100, is definitely well placed to be a city. In 4.1, on Wednesday, the 15th of September 2021, the proposed application for city status was raised at the House of Commons by the Merthyr Tydfil and Rumney Member for Parliament, Gerald Jones. Section of the speech are referenced below. Now, I know a lot of us seen that on the TV and have read it as well, so I'm not going to. Uh, read any more of Gerald's speech. So if I go to five and the key benefits for city status, in recognition of Merthyr Tidwell's contribution to the prosperity and safety of the UK and the world through coal, steel and many lives, city status is achievable. With significant improvements in the heads of the Valleys Road, Merthyr Tidwell is a pivotal point between Swansea and the West Midlands and city status would improve the connection and associations of the surrounding valley towns and villages which relate geographically and culturally more closely with Merthyr Tydfil than other cities in Wales. Merthyr Tydfil, like all towns and cities in Wales and the UK, still has problems. It is believed that applying for city status can be a focal point for bringing our community, partners and stakeholders together to solve the issues in our town and make Merthyr Tydfil a better place for our children and generations to come. The key benefits of Merthyr Tidwell becoming a city will be increase investment in the county borough, attract new businesses and skilled employees, boost economic and social development. <clears throat> if I go to 5.5, .5, by achieving city status, Merthyr Tid will be able to demonstrate the great place it is by creating a positive, attractive image of Merthyr Tidwell. Let Merthyr Tidwell be seen having the same economic and social status and potential as other cities in the UK. Enhance Merthyr Tidwell's position as a pivotal point between the cities of Swansea and the West Midlands. Strengthen our tourism profile and destination awareness. City status would also provide a greater profile to Merthyr Tidwell and surrounding area, attracting and, and retaining skilled people would contribute to driving the economic and social development of Merthyr Tidwell. To expand on economic benefits, there is greater international exposure, which leads to opportunities for inward investment as well as tourism and increased employment. Members may recall at Destination Day 2019, Merthyr Tidville received fantastic media coverage and particularly an ITV news feature reporting the area's rapid growth in tourism. Utilising 2019 STEAM Tourism Economic Impact Modelling data, which captures annual trends highlighted a 21% increase in stay in visitors from recorded bedstock data and a 51% increase in day visitor numbers. Unfortunately, 2020 presented unprecedented challenges with business closures, opening limitations and staff redundancies and furloughs, which resulted in growth trend decline. However, achieving stated city status and marketing the destination for city breaks would greatly strengthen our profile. If the status is approved, Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council would have the potential to access an additional host of grant funding opportunities. 
I the campaign agree. process in itself it would create a buzz around the aspirations of Merthyr Tidville to become a city, develop the groundswell support for majority of stakeholders, we reflect the pride and confidence that the people have in Merthyr Tidville. The application for city state that's represent to the Welsh Government, as well as Westminster, the great achievements Merthyr Tidville has made. Developing a world-class area for leisure activities, regenerating the town centre, develop an extraordinary, scenic, beautiful place to live and work with a proud and cohesive community. <clears throat> city state that's would reward Merthyr Tidville for overcoming the massive economic difficulties, tragedies and industrial uh, decimation with the tips and the mines they have been faced with over decades. Together, Merthyr Tidville has built with ambition and pride a successful, unique place to live and work with a wonderful quality of life and a community everyone should be proud of. This has especially been shown to its success in, in, back, in tackling the pandemic together. The people and businesses that, that have pride and confidence in Merthyr Tidwell and want the community to grow and thrive will appreciate and want to be part of this application for city status, which is an opportunity for the people of Merthyr to demonstrate this confidence and pride inside and outside of Merthyr Tidwell. In six, um, it goes on to, about the application process. In 6.1, the application for Queen's Partner Jubilee City status must be, must be submitted by local authorities on the 8th of September 2021, with the announcements like being made in early 2022. Contrary to popular opinion, since 1889, there has been no requirement for a city to have a cathedral. The requirements do include having a district identity, civic pride, cultural infrastructure, interest in heritage, history and tradition, a vibrant and welcoming community, a record of innovation, sound governance and administration, associations with royalty and other distinctive residents, or communities who have made widely recognised significant contributions to society and cultural infrastructure. And Merthyr Tidville fulfils these criteria convincingly. During a forthcoming consultation, local residents will be asked to give their views knowledge and experience to help show how Merthyr Tidville meets on all these criteria. Then seven, now we go on to the public engagement. 7.1, a communication strategy plan PR and a social media campaign is now in place and will be implemented if council members approve it to support the application to the Platinum Jubilee City status for submission on 8th of December 2021. Initially, the social media reaction received some negativity However, as part of the engagement via the Council website and with other stakeholders, groups as part of the PR campaign, we have seen a more positive shift in people's opinion. On Friday the 10th of September, Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council Corporate Communications Team issued a press release highlighting key benefits of the city status application. The press release included a link to an engagement poll to gauge whether there is support for the application. On Thursday, the 18th of September, the poll was available via Instagram and Facebook for a 24 hour period, which indicated that on Facebook, there were 68 votes for yes, for yes, 113 votes for no. On Instagram, 70 votes for yes, and 79 votes for no. On the council's website, there were 616 votes for yes, and 830 votes for no. The engagement via our, we our website will continue until the end of the month, and we run alongside the PR campaign with stakeholders signed posts to share their views via this channel. A total of 1,781 votes were cast across all platforms. And when I worked that out, uh, Mr Mayor, that worked out about 3% of the population. And it revealed that 42.5% are in favour and 57.4% against. Taking into consideration the communication to date has been reactive rather than planned, PR, social media and other platform content creation, the campaign has not yet had the opportunity to highlight the key benefits. It is important to note that there is evidence that there is a large audience who is still undecided or currently not engaged. The Facebook data, for example, highlighted that 870 people have viewed the content, but only 181 proceeded to vote. 
with a clear communication plan in place moving forward, it will be ensured that the public are well informed of all the, op of the components linked to city status. And, I, and again, it goes on to show some of the examples of some of the comments that the residents made for, for and against. So if I take you now, the next steps in section eight and 8.1, should members support the application submission for city status, the team will progress in developing the submission for December the 8th, 2021. To inform the stakeholders of the benefits of city states application, a collaborative PR campaign will be undertaken to include a key event, broadcast media to strengthen the understanding, enthusiasm, support for Merthyr Tidville becoming a city. Consultation with stakeholders of Merthyr Tidville for the contributions to the city status application will be undertaken to include the public businesses, the public, sorry, businesses, voluntary organisations, education, health services, local media and interest groups. The outcomes of the application will be around, it will be announced in early 2022 when further plans will be made to evaluate the application and outcome. <coughs> in section nine, we've got the financial implications. <coughs> Should members support the application submission, the forecasted total cost to proceed to full application stage would attribute approximately £45,000. This fact is professional fees, a PR and social media campaign. The PR and social media campaign is integral to the success of creating significant support whilst raising the profile and positive messages for Merthyr Tidville. Should the application gain approval, the return of investment would be significant with a clearer positive profile of confidence and aspirational aims for Merthyr Tidville. The increased media coverage for Merthyr Tidville will raise increased investment in Merthyr by businesses already present, e.g. house building, job creation, uh, expansion of present businesses and capture of the attention of businesses to invest in Merthyr Tidville's vision and ambition. The application will encourage more skilled people to remain and move to Merthyr Tidville to drive success economically and socially. The application will raise the awareness to in Welsh Government and Westminster of the vision Merthyr Tidwell has to lead the valleys to prosperity and increase social and environmental positive development, which will achieve more focus of policy, making to support the determination of the leadership of people and businesses of Merthyr Tidwell for, su for, for success. City status will increase tourism with an increased profile for Merthyr Tidwell and new city breaks market. Potential applications for city of culture and build on the inroads Merthyr Tidville has made in attracting visitors. That concludes the report, uh, Mr. Mayor. So that's all it leads me to do now is go to recommendations. But if before I do so, obviously this has caused this report and this um, this agenda tonight really has caused a lot, a lot of interest around Merthyr. And I just hope whichever way the vote goes, be it for or against, we all shake his other hands tonight or tomorrow. And we all put it to bed, whichever way. We either all get behind it or we put it to bed. So that's all I've got to say that, Mr. Mayor. So if I go to recommendations in 2.1, the application for Platinum Jubilee Status Civic Honours Competition be submitted on the 8th of December 2021 be approved. And I so move. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Uh, I think you deserve a glass of water after that marathon speech. Um, is, there, is there a second for the proposal? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I wish to second that proposal. Thank you. And uh, echo what Councillor Thomas just said. I think that's vitally important. OK, thank you very much, Councillor Lynn. Uh, Councillor Thomas, you've got your hand up. You can't speak again at the moment. Um, Councillor Clive Jones had his hand up for a question, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I have two. In the summary, which Councillor Garen Thomas just referred to, uh, 1.2, and I quote, the report outlines the background of obtaining city status, key benefits, application process, public consultation, next stages and financial information. Could I ask Mr. Mayor why public consultation was not carried out before tonight's meeting rather than an engagement with social media? 
Do you want me to come in there? Um, ask? Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can all see me. So the difference between um, a public consultation and an engagement exercise is with regards to a public consultation, <clears throat> that is where we have uh, present proposals which could impact on service delivery with engagement. It's just about t listening and talking to people and just getting a flavour of um, what their views are on it. So that's why this was an engagement process. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It doesn't really answer my question, but nevertheless, I will hope to make some comments later on. My next question is on page seven, paragraph 5.8, and I'll read it. If the status is approved, MTCBC will have the potential to access an additional host of grant funding opportunities. Could someone, one of the officers, indicate to me um, an idea of at least hopefully one or two grant funding opportunities if city status is applied for? Okay, Alan, would you like to answer that? Yeah, thanks. I can't be so spe uh, uh, spe specific, uh, and unfortunately, uh, Councillor Jones, but obviously um, having city status and being in a UK group of cities, then that will make us um, eligible for uh, perhaps future funding, which is going to come along from the UK government. At the moment, obviously, our um, outside the government's levelling up agenda, our ability to access other UK government funding is limited, but this could open a new avenue and opportunity. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, Councillor Lee Davis, please. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I need to try and get in front of Clive. That last question was one of my questions. Um, but page six, 5.4, the key benefits of Merthyr Tidwell becoming a city will be increased investment, um, attract new business. Is there any evidence on on this boost, e e well, one of them, boost economic and social development? Is there uh, any evidence that you know would lead us to believe this? Okay, I understand. Um, Jane Crow has got her hand up. Perhaps you would like to answer that, was it? Um, yeah, the evidence mainly that we've looked at are, um, for example, in Chelmsford, and it's a very different um, kind of area, but um, the increase in economic development in Chelmsford has been seen by a um, huge increase in numbers of homes built. So since it was uh, achieved city status in 2012, um, there's been an increase in uh, 6,000 new homes have been built between 2012 2021. Increase in house building, which has created jobs and, and attracted people to move to Chelmsford. 700 new jobs a year have been created in Chelmsford since 2012, um, along with the multi million pound new shopping development and private, private investment and plans for a second railway station. This is in Chelmsford that was made a uh, city in 2012. And on that, on the back of that, um, the, the, another location near um, South End on Sea has, um, is applying for city status this year. And this, the, the, one of the councillors has said, you know, look at Chelmsford to see how city status has created a new lease of life in Chelmsford. Also, if you look at Hereford, which is 40 miles down the road, so it's the same sort of size as Merthyr Tidville. Um, admittedly, it's a diff it's a very different um, situation with regard. It's very rural, but in Hereford, um, I've, I've I've consulted with the economic development um, director there, and uh, he there's been a huge increase in the um, uh, budget with regard to developing an enterprise zone, and on the back of that. The cyber security industry, which is worth, um, at, which is, has, has developed to be the biggest outside London um, and potentially is going to be worth, um, uh, sorry, it's going to be worth um, se several million pounds um, shorter term. Um, it, it's attracted um, a lot of new higher, um, higher wage jobs in cyber security. Um, and it has also 
um, increase in the overall development of Hereford. So although these, these can't be associated directly with city status, the economic development director of, of, of Hereford said without doubt, without the profile of, of city status, they would not have attracted this increase in cyber security. Also, there's been a huge increase in the investment and um, by Wolverhampton University in Hereford and what was a further education um, education uh, area. And now there's huge, um, there's a lot more uh, investment in education and improved skills. So there is, there is uh, as well as um, comparing the the status of of the cities that the cities that have been made in the last twenty years um, that they, they have done economically better than the surrounding areas. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. One last question, Mr. Mayor, if that's okay. Um, yeah, carry yeah, on. Um, Five point ten, uh, developing a world class area for leisure activities, regenerating the town centre, developing an extraordinary scenic and beautiful place to live and work with a proud and cohesive community. It, is it you know, what's stopping us doing that as a town? Why do we need to become a city to do that? Okay, Would someone like to answer that. Yeah, if I can come in, Mr. Mayor, um, I think that's. That's all incorporated in our vision and the regeneration strategies and policies that we've um, that we've been delivering over a number of years, uh, Councillor Davis. I suppose the difference that city status will give us, if you just look at the at the ambitions for a world class um, uh, visitor attraction in Kavartha, the Kavartha Heritage Area, it was the first full board meeting of the Kavartha Foundation last uh, last Saturday. It just gives us that that extra status, that extra publicity, um, and an intent of ambition to be able to accelerate those um, those ambitions that we have. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, th those plans were driving ahead without us becoming a city state. I just don't see you know what the difference would be. We you know we can make Merthyr a great town. It doesn't have to be a city. Mr. Mayor, can I just say we still need to keep the questions, not comments at this point. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you then, um, Councillor Davis. Councillor David Hughes, please. Thank you, um, Chairman. Um, can you tell me how much money has been spent on this uh, this project to date, please? That's my first question. Okay, can someone answer that, please? Sorry, Councillor Lewis, we, we, I, I can't tell you exactly how much to date, but we have incurred costs, uh, but I haven't got that figure at hand. But obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a small fraction of the total uh, of the total financial implication that's been um, that's been quoted. Yeah. OK, thank you for that. Um, the next question I'd like to ask. Uh, I thank Councillor Thomas for his uh, comments on uh, Lord uh, Rowlands. However, Lord Rowlands don't live in Merthyr. I, I find that, uh, you know, where do we live? That's the question I like to ask. Yeah, I'm not sure that's entirely relevant, is it? I, I believe it is. Uh, we quote in somebody who don't live in Merthyr. Um, you know, if he was that passionate about Merthyr, he'd be living in the town. That's what I believe. Uh, you know, it's nice to write things about the town, but it's more to we be talking about living in the town. So I do Mr. think Mr. it's Mr. Mayor, this is becoming a comment rather than a question. And I think perhaps Councillor Hughes can save that for his for his comments later on rather than as a question. OK, thank you. Did you have another question, Councillor Hughes? I keep you for the comment, thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Chris Davis then, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, and thank you, Councillor Thomas, for taking us through. I know your passion for this, uh, taking us through the report. I'm not sure you needed really take us through it line by line, but uh, a summary would have been um, helpful. But um, I understand your passion. So, Mr Mayor, my two questions relate 
to uh, section nine of the report, the financial implications. I'll start with a uh, question following on really from, from Councillor Lee Davis, and that's 9.3. And I think um, the, the views there of the report author, in my perspective, are very subjective in terms of, you know, might have been better using the word could have, but can somebody, I know uh, Dr. Crowder has attempted to talk about Perhaps I perhaps would describe apples and pears, comparing Merthyr Tydfil to places like Chelmsford and uh, you know Southend on Sea. But the report author says that the should the application gain approval, the return of investment would be significant uh, and obviously provide a clearer positive profile of confidence. Can can we confidently say though would be or you know we better edge in on this uh, side of caution saying could be. Yes, Councillor, um, Councillor Davis, um, you are probably correct. Uh, could be. Um, we hope we all have an overwhelming view of the potential positive benefits, but it is a very difficult one to quantify into into pounds, shillings, and pence. So you are probably correct. Yeah, I think it's very important, isn't it? We be subjective um, and pragmatic in our approach to writing, not to mislead members. OK, um, Mr Mayor, if I can ask a second question, it relates again to the financial implications of the report, section uh, 9.1. And again, um, I would have expected this to have been addressed in the um, report. I would have expected the corporate leadership team to have picked this matter up because typically when you talk about financial implications, what, what we members are not aware of this evening by reading this report is um, whether the 45,000 approximately that is being asked by council to support uh, progressing the application to full stage is in an existing budget. Um, I'm assuming that it's not, but if somebody could clarify that, if and if it's not an existing budget, where will this finance be found from? I can uh, I can confirm, Councillor Davis, that it's not in an existing budget, but we are currently looking at uh, at how potentially viewments from um, from budgets which are relevant could actually take this string. So, Mr. Mayor, then I thank you for that. Alan. Could it be the case, and you may come back to Council to be asking Council to support further funds out of uh, Council's reserves to support this um, at a later point if it can't be found out of, found out of any existing budgets. Um, I can't rule that out, but at this point in time, that's not our uh, direction of, uh, of travel, Councillor Davis. Okay, I would have hoped, Mr. Mayor, that um, that detail would have been included in the report. That's a comment, Councillor Davis. That's okay, a comment thank you, Montan officer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Julian Amos is next. Then, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a lot of my question actually has been covered um, by members who talked about the benefits. Um, I got to say, when I read the report, I was quite surprised at the general nature of the comments about benefits. There's no sort of evidential basis to support the statements that are made. And I would like to ask uh, Dr. Crow. Um, she did list uh, chairs, I think was one, and, and, and others. Uh, of investment that went into those following uh, them being granted city status. Um, is there uh, evidence of a direct link between them uh, being granted city status or is it more coincidental? Because uh, I know the government does put money into um, particular areas, especially to private areas or what, for whatever reason. So is there any um, causal uh, link or is it just um, basically an anecdotal uh, statement you made? That's why I have got other questions, but that's not one of them. OK, could you answer that, um, Dr Crowd? Yes, certainly. Um, obviously, there's too many variables to, um, to, to be, say there's a direct link, but certainly Hereford um, Economic Development Director um, identified that Skylon Park, um, which is a, which is a, a leading hub for cyber security excellence um, and is worth 2.8 billion, would probably not have gone ahead if they hadn't had city status because city status brought to the attention Hereford and therefore supported 
the, the, the people developing that area. So uh, the number of cities, so there are 1,872 towns um, that are competing in, in the UK, whereas there are 69 cities. So as we all know, if, there, if you're one of fewer numbers competing, it's more likely that you are going to have the attention of the investors. So although there isn't, there, there generally is, is, is a direct link in that those cities of the last 25 years that have gained city status have had better economic and social development than their regional areas. So there is, it, there is a link, but it depends on, you know, as with everything, you, if you have a, you can make a decision on, um, on the, you, can't, you, can't, you, you don't have empirical factors that can be directly linked to the city status. Although in Hereford, there has been a lot more investment. And I say this 2.8 uplift, um, the development of Skylon Park, which is the nearest area that has been made a city, is a significant improvement in the development of the area. And Chelmsford, yes, it is a very different area, but these are factors that have been highlighted by another uh, area, that another town that South, End, South End on Sea, that is applying for city status. So clearly they're convinced that Chelmsford development has been directly affected by achieving city status. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor Amos? Sort of. Um, Sorry, uh, you have another question? Yes, yes. Um, it, it's similar in some ways to the question that the councillor who was asked, uh, although I, I didn't uh, um, accept the relevance of the question you asked. But um, we have had these letters of support from um, uh, Jeff Edwards, from Peter Vaughan, from um, uh, our MP and Lord Rowland. Um, I'm not sure who would answer this question, really, if anybody at all, but um, I'm surprised at uh, those catalogue of names that we haven't had a letter of support from Dawn Bowden, our MS. I just wonder why that is. Now, I'm not sure if anybody can answer that question. Um, I don't think they can, Councillor Amos. I think okay. that would be I, well, I did say I didn't think anybody could, but it, it was would. just, it just would be a question. It was to change. It was um, my last question is, is to do with the um, consultation, and, and Kerry will probably know that I'm, I'm something I'm, I feel quite strongly about. Um, for now, it's, I, it's a question, really. Um, could I just ask, and, I, and, and it is probably one for Kerry, uh, but the figures quoted were, what they, they, they were bigger margin um, against this than it was for Brexit, but the actual number of quotes, favourable quotes and negative quotes, um, was something like two to one. Um, I counted um, there were something like fourteen qu uh, and, um, positive co uh, quotes, and only about six or seven negative ones. Yet the majority were against. I'm surprised that they were at least an equal number of positive and negative quotes. I, I just wonder what the rationale for presenting the vote um, in that in that way. Yeah, Councillor Amos, um, I'll I'll come in. Um, and as I said, just to clarify, going back to what Councillor Jones asked, we didn't do a public consultation process because we didn't have enough time because the campaign had been announced by our MP. So that was the reason why we we didn't go to a consultation. But um, with regards to your question, um, Councillor Amos. Um, we, we, we this this wasn't done deliberately. This was just getting a flavour of the comments that we've received back. Um, but um, you you know, the, the, there's plenty of comments for and against. Um, uh, you know, via, via our website and social media sites. Yes, thanks for that, Kerry. It's just that it that it. Um... I read that it tended to skew. Please don't go into comments. I no, think no, I, oh, sorry. It, that wasn't a comment. It was an observation. That's a comment. That's <laughs> a yeah, bit of a fine line there, uh, <laughs> Councillor Ramos. Uh, if you've got no more questions, we'll move on to Councillor Gareth Lewis then, please. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, 3.4 of the report um, uses a statement um, that city status 
will have a proven positive economic impact. I'm just wondering, is that the opinion of the author or, or, or is that as a source being used to provide that terminology, please? Okay, is that Dr. Crowd, please? Uh, yeah, earlier in the report, there's there's work undertaken. I can send you the the work that, as as I as I've said earlier, over the last two so um, city status has been provided in 2000, 2002, and two thousand and twelve, and all of those uh, cities have performed better economically and socially than their regional partners. So there is. There is evidence, or they had up until that was up until 2018, so it was before the pandemic. But up until then, there's been research undertaken that um, that the majority of cities have improved better than their regional partners. So yes, okay. there is some evidence. Thank, thanks for that, Dr. Crowder. Who who carried out that that research? I can send you. I can send you the the research. OK, OK, no problem. Thank you. I can, I can send you it. OK, thank you, Councillor um, Lewis. Councillor David Chaplin, next, please. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I've just got the, the one question. Um, Audit Wales have already highlighted there's a lack of capacity within the council. So how much officers time is this likely to take up uh, on, on this bid that could be used to, to sorting out some uh, real issues? So how much of the opportunity cost are we going to lose? Yeah, if I can, uh, if I can come in there, uh, Councillor Chaplin. The, any opportunity cost will be very uh, short and sharp up until December. Uh, that's why we've obviously um, put um, put a cost in the bid so that we can bring in some short term additional resources, uh, in which includes Dr. Crowd. How much officer's time has already been spent, do we know? It's very difficult to quantify because um, a lot of the work undertaken on um, on this process, you can't divorce from the uh, the general regeneration work uh, and engagement work with business, etc. That the team uh, that the various teams undertake, uh, exactly the same with the with the comms team. Uh, happy to try to quantify, uh, but up to now we, we we haven't undertaken that exercise. But um, my gut feeling is that it'd be minimal. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. That, that that's me finished. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Chaplin. Councillor Andrew Barry, please. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it's, it's a financial question. Um, what we have uh, as evidence within the report is high, high reliance on, on grant funding um, with no guarantees. Is, is there any correlation between a successful bid for city status and an increase in the revenue grant from Welsh Government. Does that does such a thing exist in the equation of calculation? Um, I probably categorically say no to that, Councillor Barry. OK, thanks. OK, thank you. Um, did you have another question, Councillor Barry? No, that's fine. No. Thanks, Mr. No. Uh, Councillor David Hughes and Councillor Julian Amos must have their hands raised. Are they legacy hands? I believe mine to raise there. Well, my, at my side, my hand is down. And my yeah, yeah, just, just come down on mine now, thank you. Um, yeah, I've just got one question, if I can, for Geraint, Councillor Geraint Thomas. Um, Geraint, as the um, regeneration portfolio holder, have you engaged with local businesses about this? Because obviously, um, from the report, it, says, it states that they would benefit. And if you have engaged with them, what has the response been? Yes, Malcolm, we have. Um, we've spoken to the um, Town Centre Partnership and to the bid, and both overwhelmingly support it. We've also spoken to the businesses on the high street, and as you know, we did have a social media campaign um, based around them, but due to some of the racious abuse that some of them were getting, that was taken down, and we aborted it um, on social media. Yeah, but uh, the businesses are, are very, very much behind it, yes. OK, thank you. Um, if there are no more questions, um, we will move on to comments then, please.
Any comments? Councillor Darren Roberts first, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> a couple of uh, comments from myself. Uh, the first one is um, the full council presentation was published on the council agenda before Gerald Jones MP made his public statement. Uh, the local authority would have already been engaged with Dr. Crowd. Therefore, in my opinion, there was ample time to consult properly with the public. As Geraint, uh, Councillor Geraint Thomas mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, the results equate to approximately 3% of the population. If we do not accept the opinion of the residents, it's a very slippery slope, um, even though those figures are extremely low. Um, again, a more robust consultation should have taken place. I agree with some of the reasons for uh, approving the application. However, the outcome of the engagement process cannot be ignored. All of the positive aspirations outlined can and should be the aspirations of the local authority with or without city status. This application on city status is a personal choice and not a political, uh, political one, Mr. Mayor. Therefore, um, the, the Labour Group members will have a free vote this evening to decide how they wish to vote for the residents that they represent and there'll be no party whip. But again, I uh, concur with Councillor Geraint Thomas's comments. Whichever way this goes this evening, we draw a line in it and all move on as a local authority working for the best interests of the county borough. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Declan and Sandman is next, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This could have been a fantastic step in the right direction for Merthyr Tidville. If only we had engaged properly with our residents, and maybe also if we had addressed the concerns they have raised over the last four or five weeks. Maybe the city status bid should have been started 12 months ago, which would, would have given the council and our comms department sufficient time to engage with residents. Unfortunately, by starting this process with only three months to go before the deadline for applications, the comms, comms department have been left in a very difficult position and the whole process now reeks of, a, of being a last minute idea. We want residents to engage more with the council. We want more residents to come out and vote at elections, but we're the ones not properly engaging with them on important issues. Now, I don't think this is, a, this is all the council's fault. Our MP must shoulder a lot of that blame as his actions have probably put the council on the back foot. At nine minutes past four on Wednesday, the 1st of September, elected members had the usual email informing them of the agenda for the next full council meeting. In that agenda, it was mentioned that there will be a presentation on city status. That's it, just a few words, a presentation on city status, no more information. Now at 10 to 8 the next morning, the 2nd of, December, of September, the domain name MerthyTiddleCity.com was registered on GoDaddy by a Cardiff-based consultancy firm who have experience in political campaigns and working with ele elected representatives. I presume this was on behalf of our MP, as this is the website he used to launch his campaign to make Merthy Tivill a city on the 6th of, Dece of, se of September. He launched his campaign a full two days before the presentation to full council, bearing in mind that, that only a local authority can submit an application. He made this all about himself, a vanity project, if you will, and has, has succeeded in dividing the whole borough. Shame on him. Now, if we were serious about this bid and wanted public support, we should have been engaging with residents months ago like Reading did and assuring our residents that we were listening to them and telling them what we were what, what we are going to do to address the issues they have raised. We as elected members have again been put in a position we shouldn't be in because no matter what we individuals vote tonight, we are going to receive criticism. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Salmon. Councillor Clive Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I first of all start by uh, uh, not agreeing with Councillor Salmon on one of his points that this has divided uh, the whole of the county borough and I'll explain why in a moment. But I do accept entirely, and I, it's part of my question, that the consultation a proper consultation should have taken place before any report on the conclusions of that consultation was put to council. 
In paragraph 7.4 on page 9 of the report, it refers to the poll of the social media platforms of Facebook, Instagram, and the council website. And if you look at that, a total of 1,781 votes from individuals, uh, and that includes 1,023 against, and 754. I said to reply to Kerry Dinham, who uh, is the head of communications consultation engagement on the 30th of September, I asked three questions. Could any individual who voted on these platforms uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and the council website, um, could they have voted three times on each one? Answer yes. Second question, could anyone <laughs> of any age, i.e. Uh, that's uh, under the age of uh, uh, 16, 15 under, voted yes was the answer? Can anyone who resides outside of the country but uh, uh, have voted on these platforms? And the answer was yes. Therefore, in my view, I do not consider that the social media vote is an accurate reflection of all the registered electors in Merthyr Tidville. And in this particular case, I am particularly interested as to what the electors of the Lem Ward in the County Borough feel about this. There are currently 46,277 registered voters in Merthyr Tidville. So even if we accept the uh, total of 1,781 that took part in the engagement on social media uh, are, are, are registered electors, and I don't accept that for a moment, this then believe, leaves 44,500 electors in Merthyr Tidville where we don't know what their view is one way or another. I also happen to think because this is a platinum anniversary next year, that the Queen will allocate four city status. There were three last time. And there'll be one each of the four nations in the UK. With only one other town applying for city status in Wales, i.e. Wrexham, clearly, in my view, that's a 50% chance that Merthyr Tidville could be allocated city status. It states in the report, and there have been a number of questions on this, but the, what it says in the report, the key benefits would increase investment, boost in economic and social development, attracting new businesses and skilled employees, and also clearly they'd be attracting more tourists. If any of that comes apart, if not all of it, if that then improves the lot of everyone in Merthyr Tidville, I will support it. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Garrett Thomas, we can't come to you until the end because you will close the debate. So next we'll go to Councillor Tony Rogers, please. The first one I heard of was playing for City Status. I felt so much pride that the County Borough of Merthyr Tidville were going to apply for it. Because I must take you back. I, I wasn't alive then, I wasn't born. But I must take you back to the part of Merthyr Tidville in the 30s. They're going to close it down. They said, we'll move them all down to us because the unemployment. And we'll shut Merthyr down. Now, there's people, who, there's people involved with that. I'm thinking of people now who have been so proud of it. I'm going to mention one that probably never heard of him, maybe. a man called uh, uh, John. Right, I'll push that on. I won't. What I'm going to say is, I'll come back to that in a minute now. That, what I'm going to say is that um, this is an opportunity. This is history in, in the making, I think. And also, I think it's a win, win, win. Because if we don't get it, at least this local authority have decided to apply for it. Because people are going to say, and you lot, a lot of elected members are a lot on the public. Public put you where you are. But you've got to make decisions as well, too. You've got to stand up and be counted as an elected member. So yes, I'm for it or not, like. 
But this is win-win because at least you will have the opportunity then of putting your name in the hat. If you don't get it, so be it. But you must have that ambition. And by not doing it, but I'm allowing out for a free vote, and I'm a Democrat, democracy, whatever decided, it, it'll, it'll be no more for me, I'll accept it all like. But when you start thinking of it, what a scene, we got an opportunity here for the future, not for us, not, not for us elected members, but the future to come for elected members, people living in Merthyr Tidwell. They'll have the opportunity to say a city. And when you go around these different places, like I have many years, for many, many years, uh, with the boxing and, and, and the rugby and the football, etc. God, Merthyr Tidwell, a city. So that's what you call pride. This is what you call ambition. But to sit back and, and nitpick and not go for it, whatever the outcome of it is, we got the, we we got the attributes for it. We got the history for it. More first than anywhere in Great Britain. Greater sporting tradition than they have ever been known. They can't touch. I played the remainder of 1938. I've got to tell you this one. Wales beat England in Indian Park 4 2. And you know who scored all the goals? All Merthyr players. Di Astley from Pant, Idris Hopkins from Mill and Bryn Jones from Penny Yard. Now try and beat that. Now, can any area tell me you can beat that? Three world champions, trained with the late great, my great friend Eddie, uh, Father Geraint. Three great champions, Ken Buchanan, Howard Winston, and Jimmy Wilde, who was born in Quaker's Yard, not the Ronda. Now we got the history, we got the effort, we got it there. What are you looking for loopholes for? Get stuck in. Let's be a city. Let's all be a city. Merthyr Tidwell deserves it. When I look at other places, I, I don't, I, and I, I don't I speak against anyone. Whoever deserves it, a, a good luck to them. But we have the history. We have the future. Now let's do it, not for us ourselves, but for the future coming behind us. When they grow up, they're going to be part of a city. When you go away, well, get it to tell you all the years you play rugby, you go away, you go, you go play all these different places. Merth is a city now. You could have Mount Elash or Tiorki. I tell you what, they'd be, they'd be clapping you. They would, they wouldn't believe you. Or go to North Wales or, or somewhere or Bective Rangers or uh, Harlequins anywhere. This is what we got. We got it. Use it. Now apply for it for the future. Get it done now. What a chance for Merthyr Tidwell. And the man I was to remember was John Derrithorn, a great Quaker. In the 30s, he employed people here and got them off off the gutter. That's what he did. Let's start remembering these people. Now, I think that's far enough I want to go. But Merthyr, let's put Merthyr not on the map, back on the map, where they rightly belong, right up the top. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rogers. Very impassionate speech. Um, Councillor Chris Davis is next, please. Yeah, Mr Mayor, I concur. I don't know how I follow that, actually, the passion and enthusiasm of uh, Councillor Rogers. But I think, uh, members, this has probably been one of the most thought-provoking and probably one of the hottest topics we probably had to discuss uh, during this council term, I think it's fair to say. And um, it has generated, as other members have said, quite significant debate on social uh, media amongst residents across the county borough. I'm surprised the council of Clive Jones didn't pick members up. This isn't a town, this is a county borough. Um, but, and I take on board, uh, you know, the comments made by members, and particularly Councillor Jones about the validity of this engagement. But, you know, Councillor Jones, you only need to go on to social media. I don't know whether you are an avid fan, just to see how the, I can see you shaking your head, um, and I wouldn't blame you in lots of ways, but how this is, as Councillor Salmon said, this is absolutely divided the uh, the residents of Merthyr Tidwell. So this is quite a significant thing for us to discuss tonight. But this could be a fantastic opportunity, I think, to shine the light on the amazing history and heritage of this great borough, uh, you know, to showcase to the world, to showcase, you know, to everybody, um, you know, a county borough that we are all, I know, absolutely proud of. However, though, um, we mustn't forget we're still in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and our efforts are being taken by our officers and cabinet to look at our plan out of economic 
recovery, the impact that COVID and Brexit have all had on the communities of uh, of Merthyr Tydfil in terms of the poverty um, implications. We were only debating a notice of motion a few weeks ago about the impacts of universal credit. Um, you know, we um, are very, as we've heard this evening, very exciting and ambitious plans. The Cavartha Foundation has held its first meeting of the trustees only this weekend, you know, to establish taking forward the long term, and they are going to be long term aspirations for the Cavartha Master Plan. But we um, we have real challenges in the county borough, you know. I just refer to one, the tackling of the antisocial behaviour currently in our town centre that is inhibiting the development of our amazing regeneration master plan for Merthyr Tydfil town centre. So I think as fantastic as city status could be for this amazing county borough of Merthyr Tydfil, sadly, and I'll quote um, a famous uh, Fat by Slim uh, lyric by saying, right here, right now, um, is probably not quite the right time for Merthyr Tydfil. I have no doubt, though, that Merthyr is totally, um, you know, a place that is very deserving of this title. But finally, Mr Mayor, all I would say is that um, our communities have spoken. Um, and I think, you know, it's important for us all as representatives to listen to that and take on board and use our votes obviously as we see fit, but uh, not forget the people who've elected us to um, to represent them, um, you know, on an issue as significant as this. Diochan Bawr, Maid, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Kevin O'Neill next, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first of all, I'm delighted we're having this debate tonight. Uh, I think it's been an excellent debate so far, and I think it reflects really well on this council. I am proud of my town, pride, proud of my culture, proud of my people, proud of the beautiful place I live. But we have the profile. During pandemic, we impressed the world. I was contacted by people in Russia, Saudi Arabia, Canada and America saying what a wonderful place Merthyr is. Mass testing, taking it on, taking on the pandemic. I've heard a lot about social media. There is a lot of stuff on social media about this. But due to my circumstances, most of you know, I've spent a lot of time out in the community in the last 12 months, yeah, talking to people, talking mm. to everybody. Bishop Headley School, the Greenie, City Status, Town Centre, this is what they talk about, and they'll give you their opinions. I have to be honest with you, very few people are supportive of City Status when I speak to them, and I've spoken to a lot. Consultation isn't a process that can be based purely on social media and based on pro forma. The team are doing their best. First week back from my suspension, I went up to Greeny and I went up to Gallanachab and spoke to people. Today, I've been in the town centre speaking to businesses and speaking to people, going into the bus station and talking to people. That's what I've been today. Social media gives you a flavour, but it doesn't tell the truth. Chris picked up with a few things that I want to touch on is that I'm concerned about the consultation. I'm concerned that we're not getting to people. And we've got to get to them. We've got to get their views. It's not their fault. We were elected to represent them, and we need to get their views. But also, we have an issue in the town centre. And that does impact on people's views about the city deal, about this new city status. People feel that we must sort out our town centre. Actually, we've got profile, we've got investment, We've got fantastic plans for the town centre, restaurants, bars, all coming with us very soon. But we've got an issue caused by legislation on homeless. And we all know what problems we've got in the high street as far as antisocial behaviour, criminality. The public are frightened. And we've got to deal with that. For me, this is becoming an unnecessary distraction. There is no guarantee, financial or otherwise. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. What I'm saying, right town, wrong time. Listen to the people. The people have spoken. And I think our focus is should be very much so on our regeneration in the high street and making the high street safer and working in partnership together. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Um, we'll come to Councillor Minton at the end, if that's OK. So we'll take Councillor Julian Amos next, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, I, I, I must say, um, Councillor O'Neill has 
said much about what I was going to say, actually. He's put it across very, very well. Um, most of us have said tonight about the um, nature of the consultation or, or engagement process or wh whatever it was. And from the start, from, from the last meeting we had, I, I was not at all happy with it. Um, and so I went out of my way to actually do what should be done and what this council should have been done is go out and talk to people. And Councillor O'Neill just referred to that. Um, unlike most of you, I can't drive. So I take taxis, I take buses, I walk a lot. And that gave me the opportunity to actually talk to people on buses, in taxis, in shops, in cafes, on the street, supermarket queues, and so on. And um, much of what is in the report in, the, in by way of comments uh, it was pretty well reflected in um, what I said, but not in the percentages. The percentages I would put very roughly a far, far close size. I don't know about um, Councillor O'Neill, he's done much the same thing, but I would put it at far nearer 80-20. It was overwhelmingly against, overwhelmingly against. And I would find it very, very difficult to go back and justify to people out there and say, well, I voted for this because I know best. Um, I was elected. To act, act as we all were, to represent the people, their views, and irrespective of what I think, I'm I'm not really convinced. There's a lot of ifs and buts in that um, report about benefits, but irrespective of what I think, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't count for anything. It's what the people out there who put us here. They are the ones who count. I. Those are the ones we should be thinking about tonight. Um, and that's why I, I'm sorry, but I, I can't support this. I, I, I will say one thing. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Neil, uh, when he was leading the, the independent group, I, I remember him, he frequently said it, and he's saying it again tonight, is that uh, when you were elected, you were elected to represent the people and the community. The community came first. I think, he, I think his group was absolutely right. Um, and as I said, that would be my thinking on this. Uh, so I, I, just, I just can't support it. OK, thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Amos. Uh, Councillor Andrew Barry, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, like every member here tonight, uh, has deliberated over, over this yes or no for city status. Um, I struggle. With, with the question uh, to this moment, I struggle with the question between what I think I would prefer um, in terms of what my business counterparts would prefer, and then what my residents who elected me would prefer. It's a very, very difficult question. Um, the the report tonight that Gary Thomas ran out, I. I if I'm honest, I, I was very disappointed in because when you're asked to make a yes or no decision, you have to have a balanced view and you have to have balanced facts in front of you. That was a one way street without doubt. Uh, there was no negatives in there and we weren't given a balanced view of which way to vote. And I, I'm desperately disappointed in that report. Um, I will applaud the, the, the Labour group tonight, Darren. For the for the for the free vote, I think that's an excellent decision, uh, and 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 to to make that move on such an important issue is, is a tremendous move for for the Labour Party. So so thank you for that. Um, where I'm left with it, um, that there, there's there's a time for 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 city status, um, and I think, you know, the the, the time for Merthyr is is absolutely solidified in its in its history and its heritage there is no question there is no one to touch us in wales and probably in the country um and a place like merthyr there is no other place like merthyr let's be fair um to me it's the best place in the world but in terms of time and a place i have to agree with, with Ke Councillor kevin o'neill uh, and, and my other members who stated this, this is not the time. 
and this is not the place. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Uh, Councillor David Jones, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I totally agree with what's been said about the engagement process being totally inadequate. Uh, so today, I spent several hours meandering around the various areas of town ward, asking whoever I bumped into their opinion on the proposed city status application. And I'd like to point out that many of them, I don't know them. Um, my opening comment was that I was that I was looking for a resident's opinions and that I would not try to influence their decision in any way and that they could only answer yes, no, or don't know. Whilst it was only a very small comparative sample, 44 people, not one person said to me that said outright no to, sit, to apply in for city status. Not one. 17 people said that they didn't know and 27 people said yes. And many have added their personal comments that they saw it as a great opportunity for the, for the county borough. And that's what I see it as, a great opportunity, perhaps not with the enthusiasm of uh, Councillor Rogers, but just for being in the contest. The name of Merthyr Tidville will be in the local and national media for all the right reasons. We've lost our coal, in coal mines, steelworks and heavy industry. But we've survived, sometimes just, but we've survived. We've just started the new journey into tourism and leisure with great successes, such as Bike Park Wales, Rock UK, Climbing Centre, and we've got the Kavartha Heritage Area starting its journey. Let's stop, let's stop putting ourselves down and let's show the pride and ambition attributed to this great county borough. Yes, there's much to do, but I look forward to these challenges, knowing the prize at the end could not just be city status, but the jobs and investment that could bring for future generations. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor David Jones. Councillor David Isaac is next, please. Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to echo the comments that the councillors have made over the consultation. I think it should have started months ago. And I, like Councillor Jones, Councillor O'Neill and others, have been walking the streets today asking strangers and residents of the pin streets of Pindaran <laughs> what they think. Firstly, um, they said to me there wasn't enough information out there for them to make a decision and that they didn't know. Then on a rough straw poll of three to one, they were against it. And basically they were put in this uh, negativity because of a lack of information. I'm reminded very much of Bryn Mawr, who won World Heritage Statement. If Merthyr had gone for us town, they could have knocked Bryn Mawr into a cocked hat. We've got more history in the lower part of town than Brimaur have got in the rural borough. And I say it with a heavy heart. I vote for the people of Pindara and I don't vote for Di Isaac tonight. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Isaac. Uh, Councillor Scott Thomas, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I just want to sort of echo obviously everybody else's sentiments you've got to really sort of take on view uh the views of the public obviously however over the last couple of months um well weeks i've i've been uh querying uh this with residents friends people all over social media personally um, and things and it is definitely a divide um very very narrow i must admit but there is a divide however for years i've viewed people um as someone who's worked in the town centre and in various businesses within the town centre, I've heard years and years people saying, oh, it'd be great if Merthyr could do more, Merthyr could be better, the, the city status, you know, Merthyr city, we could be a city. And now that the, you know, the writing's on the wall, there's a complete, obviously, sort of change in direction in people's mindsets. You know, we're not ready. We're not ready. And I, I, I would like to echo the sentiments of Councillor Andrew Barry, right, and Councillor Kevin O'Neill in this, in this instance, Right town, wrong time. Absolutely. Um, I am going to be going with the general public on this one um, and I will be voting against. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Thomas. Um, 
before I bring Councillor Mitten and Councillor Geraint Thomas back in, has anybody else got any comments to make? I think you have Councillor yep. David Hughes. Yes, Councillor David Hughes Thomas. and Jeremy Davis. Sorry, they were a bit, bit further down my screen. Apologies. Uh, can people who have already spoken take their hands down, please, just to make it a bit easier for me to see who's, who's still waiting to speak? So if you've already spoken, if you could take your hand down, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I just like to say we just come through a pandemic. We're still going through a pandemic. Um, people in Merthyr have stepped up to the the fight and they worked hard throughout this pandemic. I too speak to a lot of people. As you know, I'm up in the engine house. A lot of people come in and talk to me. Now, I can honestly say out of the staff, the hundred percent against city status. Not because they got anything against Mercy becoming a city, but they believe it's a wrong time. There's plenty to do. Look, there'll be another opportunity when we when we probably crown the king in a couple of years' time. Why don't we put all our efforts now, get them through this pandemic, and then put in our energy if that's the will of the people to go for it when either the Prince Charles or Prince, uh, whatever Harry, whatever he is, uh, puts comes forward to become king. So there'll be another opportunity. So as I would echo every a lot of the comments here today, it's uh, maybe the, the right thing, but the wrong time. That's that's what I'd say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Hughes. Councillor Jeremy Davis, then please. Yeah, I'd like to echo what a lot of councillors say. Um, at, at this moment, it's the wrong time and wrong place. We need to sort our own town out first and um, maybe go for it in the future. Because we are a great town and we've got great communities. But I think it's one for the future, not at this moment in time. OK, thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Kevin Gibbs is next, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Again, um, I'm just going to um, echo a lot of, of, of what has been said here. We have, we've all got aspirations for, for this great town. The history behind us, as, as has been pointed out, so I won't go over it again, is one of, one of, the, one of the best in the world. For the okay, the engagement wasn't, hasn't gone out to the wider public as, as we'd, we'd all hoped. But what we've seen so far and been mentioned previously, at the moment, this vote is higher than Brexit. We can we come out we come out to Brexit on a on a, on a, a, a less less percentage. I think that was fifty two percent. I think the fifty one point something closer to fifty two percent. So to me, yes, we all have aspirations for for this great town and hope we can get, get there one day. But I think there's too much problems going on in the town at the moment. Kevin, uh, Councillor O'Neill um as i like the fact about the, the anti-social behavior and work the police are trying to do there it's not just about the town center it's about the whole county borough and at the moment we do not have enough of the residents voices agreeing with the council and we need to make sure that we do listen to what the public want on this so sorry i will be voting this down tonight thank you mr mayor okay thank you councillor gibbs councillor shrill jay guy please Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've I've listened attentively to the whole debate this evening um, and wanted to listen to all of the all of the fors and against. I do feel that the engagement process um, for such an important decision of the local authority was a little too li too little too late, um, and I do echo some of the concerns of my fellow councillors whereby um, there seems to be a lack of information for residents to make an informed decision on whether or not their preference would be to become a city or re remain as a town. Um, I was elected and I promised to listen to residents. And whilst I feel that the engagement process um, was completed, I feel that um, a full engagement process um, covering all aspects and not just social media platforms should have been considered. Um, therefore, I'm in a position where I need to support what I what I was elected to do, listen to residents, so I wouldn't won't be voting for this this evening. However, I do think 
it's something that we could consider and aspire to in Merthyr Tydfil, but I too agree that it's just the wrong time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jago. Councillor John Thomas. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just like to echo everything that's been said tonight, a real great debate, I listened to everything very intensively, great. But for me, the application of the city status, city status seems a fabulous idea for the town, but totally the wrong time. We as a local authority have far more things to worry about in this town with the reinstating of our town centre, the antisocial behaviour, etc. And also the massive headache we have with the homelessness, homelessness. So for me, I got to go with my residence and tonight I will be voting this down. Sorry. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Thomas. Uh, any other comments before I bring Councillor Mitten and Councillor Gowan Thomas back in? No, no one else is indicating Councillor Mitten then, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, there's um, been lots of debate, very good debate, and lots has been said about engagement with the public. And obviously we are learning lessons from that, as, as outlined by uh, Councillor Thomas. Um, just making point in line with Councillor Amos's question, an exercise was done just on the emojis on the post on Facebook, uh, the positive ones actually, which far outweighed the negative emojis and the comments. Um, but I hand on heart believe that people have become afraid to comment, especially on that platform, due to the backlash they receive. And I, for one, uh, really are one of those people. It has totally put me off trying to engage. I will still continue to and endeavour to, but it has sadly put me off. However, I, like many others, have taken note of the constructive comments made on social media platforms and I've also noted the comments made by members of the public where I've had face to face, like everybody else, talking to people in the streets, face to face discussions and that of discussions with many business owners, but not only in the town centre, those who live in my ward and other wards as well. Much has been said tonight um, about the timing, you know, not the right time, not the right place. I just want to reiterate a point and bring it to everybody's attention. Um, the city status was actually brought to the previous leader's attention and the CEO a few years ago. So it's a shame, really, that it wasn't taken forward then, even though I know Kevin wanted to, uh, the CEO at the time didn't want to, and the choice wasn't even given to us as elected members to even discuss the opportunity regarding city status. And perhaps that then would have given us more time to consult properly. We are listening to those who have some doubt about this. I replied to many, especially on Facebook, who said that we need to get things right in the first place. The buses, the swimming pool, etc., were two of the main points of contention, which when you explain about the liaison with Stagecoach, the issue around a shortage, shortage of drivers, um, and also the joint Sorry. work to get a better deal for drivers, people start to understand. And we aren't just sat still with regards to the swimming pool. We feel the public's frustration and are working with Wellbeing Merthyr on a plan to reopen the pool. However, all of that um, said, we can't and mustn't sit still. We need to focus on the future. Again, tonight, a lot has been said about the pandemic. This should be the driver for us to move forward. We have such amazing opportunities. We have amazing community groups who did fantastic during the pandemic and continue to do so. We have new businesses coming into the town centre. And of course, as uh, some have mentioned, the Kavatha plan. We need to have belief and pride in what we can achieve. We aren't unlike any of the towns or cities who also have their problems. Again, people have mentioned tonight the antisocial behaviour. There isn't a town or city in the whole of Britain that doesn't have antisocial behaviour issues. And we're all doing our best to actually deal with those with our partners like the police force. We are trying to make life better for the people of Merthyr Tydfil and especially for our younger generations whom we need to raise their aspirations and we need to do all that we can to raise our standards. So yes, it's about getting things right. It's about working on those complaints and the concerns of some of our residents, but the vote tonight is about our future. It's about just giving this a try. We are taking the opportunity, we are seizing the opportunity and we should do that. We should be putting Merthyr Tydfil on the map, a world map that it so rightly deserves. And like my colleague, Councillor Red Rogers, has said to me previously, we must stop looking down. We must be optimistic and we should start looking up. 
And in closing, Mr Mayor, I hope that no matter what the result is, reminding us the Sunday was World Mental Health Day, I reiterate what Councillor Thomas said, and I hope that people are respectful of each other's decision and the final vote, whatever that may be, especially those on social media platforms. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Midden. So the last word goes to Councillor Geraint Thomas then, please. I think I got my voice back, Mr Mayor, as well. You know, it's been a real great debate tonight and it just shows the importance, you know, this issue is that brings to our attention and for the future of Merthyr Tidville. Mr Mayor, in, 19, in 1965, the legendary sports correspondent Hugh McIlvenny described Merthyr as landlocked in a natural bowl 20-odd miles northwest of Cardiff. He added that Merthyr maintained a defiant insularity against most, against most outside influences. He went on to say that the people are infectiously convinced that Merthyr is in possession of some kind of cosmic championship, that the town's sons and daughters have established first or best in all the significant fields of human endeavour, which is very true, I think we'll agree with that. But do the rest of the world still regard us as a defiant and insular? Defiant maybe, but insular, I hope not. We are now a tourism destination with millions of people coming to the Brecon Beacons and Bike Park Wales. Zip World has just opened the Tower Colliery, which hopefully will become part of Greater Merthyr Tidville. And our plans to turn the Cavartha Heritage Area into a world-class visitor attraction can only add to the offer. Merthyr Tidville needs to be a city break destination if we are to fulfil our ambition. We have the offer, our retail businesses and a high street are crying out for it. The town centre partnership and the bid have endorsed our application to become a city. Her Majesty the Queen is 95 years of age and in very good health. Next year, we will be celebrating her Platinum Jubilee, 70 years as our monarch and long may she reign over us. The next opportunity we will get is in 10 years, is 10 years away when Her Majesty will be 105 and we will be celebrating her Oak Jubilee. I have done some research and I can tell you there are no Jubilees after Oak. I have heard people say that this isn't the right time, but I ask you all, when is the right time? This could be the last opportunity we get. We have nothing to lose in going for, going for city status, but everything to gain. Was McIlvenny right? Are we that insular? I am sure if he was alive today, who would say that gaining city status for Merthyr Tidville will be merely the fulfilment of the natural law? This is the first time in history for Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council to debate and vote on the opportunity for our town to blossom into a city. When, you, when your grandchildren ask you, how did you vote? I hope you can look them in the eye and say, I voted yes, I voted for your future. Now, Mr Mayor, a modern officer, I'd like to call for a recorded vote because I think this is an important moment in Merthyr's history that people's names should be on the register. So I move, I, I move that, um, modern officer, Mr Mayor. Yeah, th thank okay. you, Mr Thomas. I think as you'll appreciate, um, you need five people to support that. Um, I anticipate that there will be more than five people. And Mr Mayor, with your permission, what I was just going to say is if you just want to put your hand up, if you support the call for a recorded vote, rather than just asking five people to show, everybody have a chance to show if they want to do that. So if you want to do that now. Yes, Mr Mayor, they, we have a clear, uh, overwhelming number of, of members who want to go for a recorded vote. Um, so, Mr Mayor, we haven't done a recorded vote um, in this remote environment as yet. So what I'm going to do is read out the recommendation that has been moved. Then I will read the name of each councillor. You will have to say whether you are for the motion, against the motion, or abstaining and you have to do that by taking yourself off mute 
then put yourself back on mute so that we don't get any interference. Um, I hope that we can do that without too much problem. And so I'll proceed. I know Councillor Ramos knows he's always the first on the list. Um, so if I begin by reading the recommendation, which is that the application for Platinum Jubilee City State Civic Honours Competition be submitted on 8th of December 2021 be approved. So I will go and ask whether you are for, against or whether you abstain. Councillor Julian Amos. Against. Councillor Howard Barrett. Uh, <coughs> for, please. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Barry. Against. Councillor Chris Barry. Against. Councillor Brent Carter. Sadly, against. Councillor David Chaplin. Against. Councillor Malcolm Colbran. For. Councillor Chris Davis. Against. Councillor Jeremy Davis. Unfortunately against. Wrong time. Councillor Lee Davis. Against. Councillor Goldsworthy is not present. Councillor Kevin Gibbs. Against. Councillor David Hughes. Against. Councillor David Isaac. Against. Councillor Sherelle Jago. Regrettably against. Councillor Clive Jones. For. Councillor David Jones. For. Councillor Harvey Jones. Against. Councillor Michelle Jones. For. Councillor Gareth Lewis. For. Councillor Lisa Mitten. For. Councillor Kevin O'Neill. Against. Councillor Gareth Richards. Against. Councillor Darren Roberts. Against. Councillor Tony Rogers. For. Councillor Declan Salmon. Against. Councillor Tanya Skinner is not present. Councillor Bill Smith. For. Councillor Geraint Thomas. For. Councillor Ian Thomas. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Against. Councillor Scott Thomas. Against. Councillor Clive Tovey. Against. Thank you. OK, I'll make that uh, 10, 4 and 21 against monitoring officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr Mayor, I agree with that. That is what I have recorded here. And on that basis, the motion falls. OK. Thank you very much. Um, do we have anything else to do? Um, that's the last item on the agenda, I understand. So uh, in that case, that's the end of the meeting. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.